Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this lecture is all about installing Cassandra on our HDP sandbox. So in the previous lecture we have seen what is Cassandra, its basic features as well as we have seen how the data is stored in Cassandra, its architecture as well as some real world use cases. But now let's get our hand dirty and install Cassandra on our Hadoop sandbox. But installing Cassandra is a very complicated task because it is not preloaded in the HDP sandbox and we need to do some extra work to run this Cassandra service on our server. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first step would be just boot up your HDP sandbox and kept it in a running condition and make sure that all the services are running fine without any issues. So I have already kept it in running position. So the next step would be just open the putty terminal and log in as a maria underscore dev. So here the host name is again maria underscore dev at the right local host and the port is 2222. So just save this session for quick login and you know the password. So just give like maria underscore dev. Yeah. And to install Cassandra, we need to make sure that we are running a proper Python version first. So to verify it, just give like python dash v. So as you can see, we are running 2.7 version of Python. But if you're having 2.6 version, Cassandra will not be compatible for our sandbox. So it totally depends on which version of HDB sandbox you're running. So if you're running earlier versions, probably it will have 2.6 version of Python installed. But you cannot just upgrade that Python because Hadoop will need some specific version of Python in your system. So to tackle this, I'll just give some commands on this screen as well as in the description below. So you need to make sure that you install both versions of Python and you can switch between them. So the first step would be you need to log in as a root user so that you will have all the privileges. Then you need to install the SCL utils which will give you the capability to switch between the Python versions. Therefore, you will not create an issue in your CentOS which is installed on your virtual box and you can also run the Cassandra which is compatible for the Python 2.7 version. So if you face any difficulties running these commands, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But all of the people who have the Python 2.7 version installed, then don't worry, we can just start our installation right away. But still, we need to do some configuration. So we cannot give like yum install Cassandra to install Cassandra. It's way more complicated than that because HDB sandbox doesn't come with the required repository which can able to fetch all the Cassandra packages. So we need to go to a specific directory where we need to save this specific repository in which there will be all the configuration which are needed to install the Cassandra. So are you ready? So just log in as a root now. So give like su root so that you will have all the privileges, give the password. So after that, just go to one directory. So give cd. The directory is etc slash yum dot repos r e p o s dot d. Hit ls. And now in this repository, you need to create one file named as data stacks dot repo. So to create a file and put all the configuration in it, we will use the vi editor. So I hope you know about the VI editor. If not, we have a dedicated video which is present in our Unix shell scripting tutorial where you'll get clear idea of VI editor and how to use it. But for this lecture, just give like VI and give the file name data stacks dot repo. Yeah, so you are in the VI editor now. So you have to press I to go into the insert mode so that you can write all the configuration here. So give like I square bracket give like data tax bracket complete on the next line give like name equal to so give the proper name so it is like data stacks repo for apache cassandra this is the name of the repository on the next line give like base url equal to http colon slash slash rpm dot data stacks dot com slash community on the next line give like enabled equal to one and on the last line give like gpg check equal to zero 
so just cross verify it and to save this you need to give the escape then give colon wq to write and save this file and hit enter so if you can just look out into that repo just give like cat data stacks dot repo here you can see the data has been successfully saved so you have pretty much made the repository to accept all the cassandra packages so we can just now right away install cassandra in our hadoop sandbox so the command is yum install dsc30 so it is not like cassandra you have to give dsc30 so if you hit enter so it will just start installing the cassandra service so you can ignore the errors which are coming here so just wait for the installation to get complete give y so it is now downloading the packages and that's it so the cassandra has been installed successfully in our sdp sandbox so it was a bit complicated but thank god it got finally installed so to start the cassandra service all you have to give like service cassandra start hit enter so it is starting cassandra now and that's it our cassandra service is finally started so i hope you remember in the previous lecture we have seen how we can execute different commands by using the cql language so cql is nothing but a language which we can use to retrieve the data from cassandra database and for that purpose you can use the cql sh command line so to launch it you just have to give like cql sh hit enter and as you can see you are in the cql sh command line so you can pretty much run all the cassandra commands from here so that cql language is pretty similar to the sqls but it will not have any join operation so it has its own limitations but you can do all sorts of operation you can just create a database but here we don't have a concept such as database we have the concept known as key space so which is pretty much the same as database but it's a different nomenclature that's it to just gets our hand dirty with cassandra what we can do is we'll just create one key space so that we can create one table in it and in the next lecture we will populate that table with the data by using the spark so it will be a lot of interesting so first we need to create a key space first so to do that you have a simple create command so just give like create key space so our key space name would be movies data which because we are dealing with the data which is related to movies and you have to give the configuration here so the first configuration is replication so as we have the single node cluster we will keep it simple so give like equal to in curly braces give like class so here the class would be in the single quotes again give like simple strategy so as the name suggest we'll keep everything simple now because we only have one node in our cluster comma give like replication factor so here replication underscore factor so it doesn't make sense here because we have only one node we will keep it as one only because there will be no replication in our hadoop sandbox so just close the brackets and give and then give durable rights equal to true so we are enabling the durable rights for our key space named movies data so if everything looks good give semicolon enter and that's it our key space has been created now so as our key space which we can also say database is created let's create one table so here also we will take an example of the users table which has the data related to users who have given ratings for different films in our movies database so i hope you remember that file so that file has a field such as user id age gender occupation and the zip code where that user resides so we'll keep it that only so to do that you have the ddl command which is create table the table name we will call it as users and in bracket give the table definition so the first one is user 
id as int age as int then we have the gender so the gender has the text database then we have the occupation of that user so the occupation is again text then we have the zip so the zip code will be usually integer but in our data files there are some places where it is text so we will keep it as text and then there is an important point which we discuss in the previous lecture every table should have some primary key so here also we we have to provide some primary key here so for this example our primary key would be user id so give like primary key in bracket user id user underscore id so I think it looks good so just hit enter so we just encountered one error so we have created a key space but we haven't selected that so we have to give use move is data so it is similar to SQL before creating table you need to specify which database you need to select so just give move is data yeah so then we are in our movies data key space so here we can execute our create statement so again by using the up arrow just get the previously executed command and now hit enter that's it and just to make sure that table is created use the describe command so we can give like describe table the table name is users so hit enter so as you can see this is our metadata for our table so these parameters will be overwhelming for you but just ignore it for a while and just focus on the basics so if you just give the select query select star from users so that table is empty but we have successfully created one table so in this lecture we have installed the cassandra as well as we have started the cassandra service then we have created one key space which is nothing but database and we have created one table in that particular key space so in the next lecture we will use spark to populate the data in this users tables so i hope you like this lecture but i want you to focus on the basics so if you're not clear about what is cassandra and how the data is stored in it as well as its architecture and how the components fit together to provide the solution then i recommend you to watch the previous lecture to get to the better understanding so i'll be providing all the installation steps in the description below so that it will be easier for you to go through it and successfully install Cassandra. And in the next lecture, we will start to work with the Cassandra and populate that user's table with some data. So if you like this lecture, please hit subscribe and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.